I'm going to talk this morning about um, a couple of ideas. So the first one is uh, Simon Aronson famously said, there is a vast difference between someone not knowing how a trick is done and knowing that it's not possible. And I think what he was referring to was the idea that um, some magic that we do is not figure outable, if that if I can use that term, is is mystifying to an audience is, is more like a puzzle, and some magic is miraculous. And I wanted to do a few tricks, the same trick actually, using different handlings, and sort of talk about some of the things that might make a trick uh, more amazing or less amazing. And I have decided that we would do the same trick repeatedly, and I have chosen the production of four aces for this. So uh, we'll start with a simple version. It's actually a very rudimentary version that I learned as a teenager, using no sleight of hand that will challenge or fool most of the people who would sign up for a conference like this. So let's say I'm doing a show and I need to get the four aces from this pack of cards. Uh, here's one way I might approach that. Uh, let me cut, let's say, right about here. And yes, there's an ace right at that location. And then about 20 cards down, so if I cut off 19, that would be the second ace right there, ace number two. That leaves two aces somewhere in the pack. Uh, would you rather see them one at a time or both at the same time? Both at the same time, that's what I thought you'd say. There they are, one, two, three, all four aces. And normally under any, yes, okay. <laughs> under any other circumstances, you would get a round of applause there. So what do non-magicians think when they see a trick like this? Um, I'll tell you what they think. This is a good commercial trick. I've done it thousands of times. They clap and they like it and they'll say things like, boy, I'd hate to play cards with him. But this is not in any way magic. This is a demonstration of skill. It's a skillful kind of trick. And I'm not making a value judgment about that. In other words, um, there are times and situations where a demonstration of skill is absolutely the right choice and an appropriate choice. But what about other kinds of uh, handlings for the same kind of trick? So let's now do something that I think is um, a little more magical looking. Right? This is a handling by Paul Harris, first published in 1977. Uh, and this is called The Open Revelation. Two fans of cards, like this. And I just sort of wave them over the tabletop like this. Ooh, and an ace appears. That's one. That's two. That's three. And that's all four aces. <laughs> yes, a little encouragement from my friends. So I think that clearly this is a more magical looking approach for this. This is a more magical kind of um, handling, less skillful. But when people watch this, uh, I think this is equally not magic to them. This is, it looks like sleight of hand, right? This is actually... Um, it speaks to the old debate, and you've probably heard about this. In fact, I spent uh, quite a while last night talking with DeVoe about this. Uh, do flourishes diminish the, the impact and effect of magic? And um, the answer shortly is yes, they do. Uh, but I'm not saying that you should not do flourishes. In fact, for some people, they are wholly appropriate. But anytime you do something skillful as part of a trick, that speaks to method and will actually make the uh, magical impact uh, diminished in certain ways. What if we wanted to do a version of this that didn't look like sleight of hand? Now, it's entirely possible to set up for this next piece in front of an audience cold, but since we have time constraints, I'm just going to bring out uh, a deck that's preset for this trick. This is uh, Earl Nelson's handling of the sleeve aces. So let's say I want to um, find four aces from this pack, and I don't want it to look like I'm doing sleight of hand. Uh, so I'm just going to cut. There's a packet of cards. That's a uh, two of clubs in the face of one packet, and on the other packet, the four of clubs. Right? So if I uh, rub the two of clubs like this against the sleeve of my jacket, and notice right out at my fingertips there is no sleight of hand and no manipulation, yes, that card simply changes into an ace. And with a regular audience, you will actually get applause right there. Uh, if I take the next card, rub like the same thing, again, right at my fingertips. No manipulation whatsoever. Yes, this is the second ace. Two aces appearing at the faces of the packets. I don't have four hands, so it's impossible to 
keep doing this, but I could rub this uh, red ace against my jacket and this red ace against my jacket. And yes, they both change instantly into the two black aces. <laughs> One, two. And uh, now the red aces have to be brought back. So you make one last time. Make a little rub like this. A little rub like this. Right at my fingertips. And yes, there they are. One, two, three, all four aces. Why, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> this, I think, is getting closer to a trick that regular people, that uh, non-magicians would look at and say is more like magic because there is no overt ma manipulation. And Earl has very carefully taken out of it any sense of manipulation, especially at the moments of change. Right? Am I, therefore, suggesting that if you want to do the best possible magic, you can never handle anything? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm suggesting that's one approach. Right? But let's move one step closer to something that is uh, impossible-seeming. And what makes this impossible seeming is that I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let someone else do it. So in this room, it's very hard to find a non-magician. I think I'm going to invite my friend Max up to play the role of non-magician. Would that be all right, Mr. Maven? Welcome Max Maven to the stage <clears throat> as he comes around <laughs> on this side, if you would, sir. So, uh, first of all, before we do this, isn't this amazing? It's fantastic. It is fantastic. All right. So you've been following the talk, uh, both watching me and following it online and seeing the chat. How am I doing so far? You have fans. Okay, good, good, good. So um, I'm going to find the four aces. And you've seen me do this before, but it's probably been a long time. Pretend that you've never seen it. In fact, pretend that you Who don't you? know anything there is to know about magic. Who are you? I'm Eric. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Max. Max, nice to meet you. Um, we're going to find the four aces together. Okay. What's interesting is I'm not going to do it. You are. And what's to make it even more difficult... Uh, I'm going to have you find the four aces one by one indirectly. And I know that's hard to understand what I mean, so uh, I'll show you what I mean, and I'll explain it as we go along. It'll be very simple for you. So I'll mix the cards up. And uh, if you would, please, any, any number of cards you'd like to, it could be a small pile, middle, big pile, uh, lift off a pile and put them on my hand right here. Okay. Beautiful. And uh, you cut right here to this card without any help from me. And let's see what you've done. You've got a 10. So if I were to count from the top of the deck, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards, we arrive right here at an ace. 10 cards down. I want you to see there are no aces near there. Uh, the aces are not clustered like at the top of the pack or at the bottom of the pack. And it just so happens by fluke that you cut to a 10. Let's give the cards another mix. And uh, I'll spread them out this time. And instead of cutting the cards, just slide any card forward out of there that you would like. Any anyone, anyone, yeah. Um, this one. This one. And before I continue, if you'd like to, you can push it back and trade it for a different one. That's awful tempting, but I'm going to stick with this. Okay. A five, ladies and gentlemen, five, five, five. So just like before, if I count from the top of the pack, that's one, two, three, four, five cards down. Oh, look, there's a second ace. And importantly, they're not all clustered together here, the top of the pack. And uh, just by fluke, Max happened to pull a five out of the deck. So a little mix before we continue. And uh, two aces left. Just try to do something a little different. Cut towards yourself any number that you'd like. And he's cut, interestingly, to another five. But that five lies right here next to an ace. Ten minus five. Five again. Five again. Actually, take those cards, mix them up, and instead of doing it that way, cut anywhere you'd like to. Anywhere you'd like to. Or, or shuffle, <laughs> if you'd like. It's fine. So it makes no difference. Uh, didn't you say shuffle? No, I said oh. cut anywhere you'd like to. Turn them That's face what up. What kind of a late person Turn them face up. Are you happy with this spot, or you, we can shuffle no, and cut, cut again? It. Okay, cut again. Look at that. That's just by fluke, yeah, but I let's take it. One, one two, three, four, five, six. 
Yes, I'm not sure, Max. We're going to have to go differently. Uh, right. Just grab a card. Any, grab a card. Pluck one out there. What'd you get? I got a three. So if I count from the top, uh, yeah, let's, this is a one, two, oh, lucky me, three. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> thank you. It's one of the hazards of being live and not being able to cut and go back. That was a uh, obviously a little disaster at the end. Not your fault, my fault entirely. Because you picked me to come up here. Because I picked you to come up here. And now I'm going to send you back to your seat. A wise <laughs> choice. Yes. <laughs> Max Maven, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, when that goes flawlessly, the spectator does all of the work, and I seem to be just standing here doing nothing uh, except facilitating. And this is, I think, approaching a trick that people would say is magic. And actually... Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that other thing since we have a little extra time. Is that okay? So now um, we'll leave the cards for a second. And we'll talk about uh, all of these principles coming together. Um, this is what spectators would see as a sleight of hand effect. But at some point along the way, they're following and they go, oh, sleight of hand, beautiful sleight of hand. And then there's a moment in this trick where it leaves the realm of sleight of hand and becomes totally impossible. And uh, this is the kind of thing that I like to do uh, when I want to do real magic for people. So there's nothing in my hands. And I would normally have a spectator come up and cup their hands in front of them like this. And I would say, I'm going to pluck from your hands something, right? My sleeve's back right at the tips of my fingers here. And I pinch your skin a tiny bit. Ah, and there it is. That's a pure silver dollar. I hand this to the spectator. They examine it. And I say, let's do it again, okay? Nothing else in my hands. It's just a little reach. And a second coin appears from nowhere. Two coins. And uh, just to make the point right there in the air, do you see it? So there it is, coin number three. Three solid silver dollars. Thank you. Uh, solid silver. They come from nowhere, right? So uh, I'll try to put them back where they came from. Uh, and we'll do this camera right here. So right at the tips of my fingers, right out here, I just squeeze it. And it disappears. That's one gone. Two coins left, nothing between my fingers or hiding anywhere. I'll hold both of them so you can see them like this. Don't let this part distract you. Gone. Not in my sleeve, on the outside by my elbow there. If you look close, you can see that's where I'm just sort of hiding it. Right? Okay, it's not true. It's funny to say, though. It's a little rub like this, and that coin disappears. That leaves just the one coin in my hands. This is the tough one, because now there's nothing else to distract or hold your attention. So in order to make this coin disappear, I have to sort of get your mind, there it is, on the coin. It gets smaller and smaller until I drop it. It doesn't even make a sound, and it vanishes. Okay, but wait for it, wait for it. And that's it, it's gone. <laughs> Thank you. If you want them back, you go like this. There's a little nothing from the air, there's a little nothing. What does that look like to you? Right, nothing. Okay, but if I squeeze it, yes, it becomes one coin. Uh, the second coin is that one I told you about that's hiding my elbow. That's number two. And I want you to see there's nothing behind the coins. Look between my fingers. The fact that my sleeves are up the fronts of my hands, the backs of my hands. I'm not hiding anything anywhere. And uh, right here from the air, there it is. That's coin number three. One, two, three. So I'm not going to um, try to draw conclusions for you. I just kind of wanted to stake out some of the territory, those ideas about tricks that are obviously skill, tricks that have skill elements, and then tricks that surpass skill and look more like magic. And I hope you enjoyed the first talk of EMC. Please uh, send questions. I would like this to be, I think we would all like this to be a dialogue as much as it is, as it is a lecture. And uh, I'm going to sit back now and uh, see what you see and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric